So I finally sat down and watched Tokyo Revengers because it was recommended to me a while ago. And the first attempt through, I made it like two episodes in and I was like, eh, not for me. But then I was like, well, you know, it was recommended to me. Maybe I should give it a second shot. I made it through the first season and I'm gonna be honest with you. I when the first season aired and when it, the manga was going, I don't know why it received so much hype. So for those of you who don't know, Tokyo Revengers is a delinquent style manga and anime, and it also incorporates time travel stuff, which I just want to say right now, time travel, I'm not a big fan of. It's not, a, it, it doesn't like, kill anything for me. I mean, obviously Back to the Future, one of the greatest time travel movies ever made. But in this sense, it's just, it, it's, it's weird. It's weird. And the first thing that kind of threw me off was, believe it or not, the time travel mechanics of the show. So basically the main character of the show, which I am going to refer to him in the way that my brain heard his name the first time, we're gonna call him Tamagotchi. So anyway, so Tamagotchi is this 26 year old dude who basically can time travel 12 years back into the past into his 14 year old body and his mind and his body are there. And then like he has to like save his girlfriend who dies later in the thing and Basically, it's weird for me because essentially the first thing that I picked up on and I just couldn't shake it I was like, well, maybe it's it gets better But like I couldn't shake the fact that it's like it's a 26 year old dude in in his 14 year old body Have like like and he's like dating his 14 year old girlfriend Which like we've seen in other shows before but like as I've gotten older I'm just like ooh ah I and I started thinking I was like well wait a minute my my daughter my oldest daughter is getting close to that age and I'm like but what if like some dude like time traveled his brain back into his 14 year old body and then he was like macking on my daughter and and like he was just really mature for his life. like it's just it's weird or like what if me as like a 32 year old me time travels my brain back into my 14 year old body and then like I find my wife who's a 14 year old, but like I, as like a 32 year old man in a in a 14 year old's body is talking to my wife who's also, four. Do, do I just, it just, time travel just gets weird and that doesn't make the show bad. It's just one of those things that it's like, uh, uh, anyway, so moving forward, Essentially, the, one of the things that makes this show just egregious when it comes to time travel is time travel is its own plot armor. <clears throat> it always is, it always will be, and I, I don't know, like even in Back to the Future, the time travel, the timeline was its own plot armor, right? It's just a strange thing, and oftentimes it's just not done in a way that I like. But anyway, he's gotta go back in time, because eventually at some point in the timeline, the girlfriend, who is absolutely an adorable character, she's, she's a fun character actually in the show, she's probably the best character, and I think a lot of people agree with that. But she eventually dies at some point in the timeline, so he's gotta go back in time to correct everything, and when he was younger, he ran away from like the delinquents, and then in this timeline, he decides that he's not gonna run away from the delinquents. And instead of like taking himself and her away from all of the trouble that that is, and then just trying to take them away from the bad situations, his idea is, oh no, I need to stay in the bad situation for a long time, cause that, cause that makes sense. And then eventually, because the timeline is its own plot armor, like when he does the thing that he goes back to do because he thinks that, oh, if I change these little things, then obviously it's going to make everything better. <laughs> the plot comes in and says, no, because I have a story to tell and it continues. So I watched the first season of Tokyo Revengers. Again, it was recommended to me and I was like, you know what? I will give it another shot. I think this, if people are telling me it's good, then you know what, I, the least I can do, especially people that I talk to on a regular basis, then you know what, what I will do is I will go back and I will check this show out and hopefully it's good. Maybe I was wrong the first time, but as I'm watching this show, I find myself increasingly just not liking the main character, Tamagotchi. I don't like him, I know that's not his name. For those of you who love the show, I don't care, I'm calling him Tamagotchi, that's how my brain heard it the first time, because there was loud noises and I was like, wait a minute, what was his name? Oh no, it's not Tamagotchi, it's it's another, okay, I'll say it once. It's, it's Takamichi. But anyway, so Tamagotchi <clears throat> is a crybaby through the whole show. And the way that he convinces people to not do the bad things who are delinquents who literally go out and like beat the holy snot out of each other is to like 
cry at them and, and tell them how amazing they are and how they shouldn't be doing these things. And I, I get it. They're trying to make him an, an endearing character. He is not endearing. He's kind of annoying. And it was just weird to see that. And Tokyo Revengers was really highly praised for a long time, basically until the manga wrapped up, because I did my research after I watched the first season. And as the first season keeps going on, you watch this guy and he doesn't really change a whole lot. Like he doesn't have a character arc. He doesn't become somebody different. He doesn't really become strong. I mean, kind of, but not really. And then, as it keeps moving forward, he keeps having to time travel back and forth between his 14-year-old self and his 26-year-old self. And then you find out that when he time travels back in time, his 26-year-old body just lays there catatonic. And then his, he assumes like his 14-year-old body, but when he time travels back into the future, he, him, as who he is, like as the 14-year-old is there and he has no idea what happened and like they allude to that and i'm like that's a that's a big thing like this kid is just living his life and then all of a sudden he just kind of blacks out for two weeks and then a whole bunch of stuff happens and then he comes back too and he has no idea what's going on and to me even watching the first season of tokyo revengers i could not figure out why this show was so highly popular and why it was getting recommended to me, why people were saying that it was good because even the first season was just not good. There were a lot of things in it that were one, kind of cringe to me, two, didn't make a whole lot of sense and didn't really feel like the author really wanted to do anything about that or kind of set that straight like, you know, the 14 year old kid whose mind literally gets inhabited by his future self and he blacks out for two weeks and then all of a sudden he wakes up two weeks later like, oh, what happened? Where is, like, they don't really try to clear any of that up. And then again, because it's a time travel thing, well, and we've got to make the series go on longer, every time we fix a problem in the past, oh, it's not actually that problem, it's a new problem in the past. And then if you read the manga, you kind of understand, and if you go through the manga, I did not read the manga, I watched YouTube videos on people who did read it, because again, I was like, okay, does it get better? Because if it gets any better, I'm gonna continue watching the show. Uh, it doesn't get any better. It really doesn't. I struggled with this because I was like, I don't understand why it's so good. And so I was like, no, it's got to be because it gets better after the first season. And one of the things that I have to say about Tokyo Revengers is that it is a wildly good premise with some seriously lacking story beats and storytelling in it. And <clears throat> I'm glad I watched it because now it gives me something to talk about in a video, but also at the same time, it makes absolutely no sense. And the writer obviously knew that. In the manga, he gets to a point where he's like, hey, this is a really good stopping point. And everybody knew it was a good stopping point, but then he continued to go. And then he just, it just magic new rules like oh he's got to end the story now because it's obviously gone on way too long and now it's he's not the only time traveler which he kind of says in the one w which creates a villain for him to fight and then the villain was actually the reason that the timeline kept resetting and and his wonderful girlfriend kept dying in the future and and so he kept going back because he uh uh he he was a simp he wanted the girlfriend to love him instead of Tamagotchi, but the girlfriend loved Tamagotchi, and so he just kept going back and screwing everything up. And then he dies in the dumbest way possible. And then and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, there was a time traveler before him and he and he was a bum. He was he was a bum on the streets. And then the way that you get time travel is by by you gotta you gotta take somebody out, and then so the kid takes the bum out, and then he has to go like try to take himself out and that activates the time travel but then he can just give the time travel away and then after he gives the time travel away everything's okay and then the time travel is oh you can only jump back 12 years the whole time but then in one of the last versions of the time travel of the book he grabs hands with somebody because now you don't have to take somebody out you just shake their hands for time travel but then two people time travel and I saw the writing on the wall for this, and overall, after watching this, I'm glad I did because I like it was recommended to me, and I do like taking recommendations, especially from people in my community. And but guys, Tokyo Revengers, like who thought this was a good show in the beginning? I just 
even in the beginning, I saw the writing on the wall for it, and I was like, ooh, this is cringe. This is, this is not, this is, this is no, mm-mm, new, 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 new. But for some reason, they said it was good. And I'm confused. And this makes me nervous because I have more people recommending shows for me to watch because I want to watch good shows and I want things to talk about here. And now I'm really afraid because I never got into Code Geass and now I'm gonna go watch that. And maybe I'm doing a video next week on how great or how terrible Code Geass is, but I don't know yet because I couldn't get into it. And some people recommended it again to me today. And thank you for watching this rant. Tokyo Revengers was not good from the off. I don't know why people thought it was. The writing was on the wall. Kind of literally, because the guy was writing it. Anyway, it was written in the books, guys. If you want to see some other stupid things that I say about anime or even video games on the channel, go check out some of these videos right here. It was awesome to see you guys listen to me rant. I am interested to see what you guys have to say in the comments. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.